The relationship between pollinator and plant is usually considered a mutualistic partnership. The plant provides food rewards to the pollinators, who in turn enhance plant reproduction by transferring the pollen. However, as with many cooperative partnerships, the interest of the two members may not completely align, which creates the potential for conflict between the plant and the pollinator, where it may benefit both to cheat the other. In a new study from the University of Sussex, researchers report the results of a field experiment showing that plants can naturally and effectively drug bees into foraging and recruiting in ways that may benefit not the bee, but the plant. Caffeine is found in high concentrations in the leaves, the seeds, and the stems of plants. Caffeine is also found, although in lower concentrations, in the nectar of about half of plant genre, including coffea, citrus, and camilla. We hypothesize that caffeine could be having an effect on the behavior of the pollinators. To understand the ecological significance of caffeinated nectar, the scientists trained individually marked honeybees to forage at one of two feeders, both at the same distance from the hive. One feeder contained one molar sucrose solution and the other feeder contained a one molar sucrose solution laced with caffeine at a concentration found naturally in nectar. After training, the freely flying honeybees forage reliably and at their designated feeder for three hours. The researchers began by monitoring the foraging frequency. This was done by counting the number of times an individually marked bee returned to her feeder to drink during the three hour period. As predicted, they found that a forager collecting the caffeinated solution returned more often, about 24 times per three hours, compared to a forager collecting the non-caffeinated control solution, who returned around 19 times. At the same time as the bees were uh, foraging at the feeder they've been trained to, we monitored the dances when they came back to the hive. The waggle dance is a unique behavior where a forager recruits her nestmates to exploit the good resource by communicating the vector from the hive to the forage. Only bees working the very best patches will even make a waggle dance. Both the dance propensity, uh, that is whether a bee dances at all, and the dance frequency um, increase as the quality of the resource increases. Each colony was housed in a glass-walled observation hive, which allowed the researchers to observe the waggle dance recruitment of the bees for the three hours in which they were foraging at the feeders. As predicted, there was a strong effect of caffeine on waggle dance recruitment behaviour. 88% of bees foraging at the caffeine feeders performed at least one waggle dance during the three hours, compared to 67% of the bees foraging at the control feeder. And then, once a bee began to dance, caffeine more than tripled the dancing frequency or the number of dances a bee per unit time. The researchers next wish to assess the post-exposure effects of caffeine. Persistency is the tendency of honeybees to return to a feeding location after it has become unrewarding. On the next morning, the researchers placed two empty feeders in the exact locations where the caffeine and control feeders were on the treatment day. For the next six days, they monitored the two feeders for the persistent visits of marked foragers, returning to investigate the now unrewarding feeder. As predicted, bees that had received caffeine during the treatment returned more persistently on days one to six to the unrewarding feeders, both for more days and more often within days. Lastly, under the influence of caffeine, foragers are less likely to explore the area for alternative forage. If a plant puts caffeine in its nectar and by doing so attracts more bees, that's good for the plant, but not so good for the bees. However, the bees still get nectar, but maybe not as much as they would have done otherwise. Here we have shown that the effect of caffeine and nectar is akin to drugging because the individual bee's perception of the reward quality has been altered. As such, our data provide a fascinating example of the ongoing tension in the pollinator-plant relationship and offer a wonderful glimpse at the diversity and subtlety of the mechanisms used by cooperative partners to manipulate each other.